we have made tremendous progress as a country since the passage of the ADA. But make no mistake, there remains more work to be done. Today, we are to celebrate the ADA anniversary and we should not disperse singing till we meet again. Rather, we should honor the anniversary of the DA, the ADA, by doing certain things. Let me talk some of the things we need to do. Maybe two or three. But today we have a very large group of persons with disabilities. We want to welcome each one of you, every one of you, also our visitors. Okay, today is a celebration. And believe me, I am celebrating. I was in Washington 20, 2010 at the Independent Living Conference and I bought a t-shirt with these words for $15. Today, I was lucky enough to get one free with the same words. Read the words first. Read the words. Feel the power of the disability vote, okay? We have been teaching our consumers at the Center for Independent Living how to use that new voting machine, all right? We have a new voting machine. I don't know if everybody is aware of that. And we, I had them come there twice last month because I want to make sure that persons with disabilities know is that the Department of Labor so that they can be attuned to the needs of persons with disability. After all, if we're gonna try to get them prepared to enter the workforce, if we're gonna be encouraging employers and engaging employers to provide these employment opportunities, then of course our staff, and we recognize that the staff at the department also needs to be sensitized and to be trained. In collaboration with Ms. Brownlow's agency, VI Association for Independent Living, we've conducted assessments of all of our programs and our equipment, the accessibility, and I'm happy and proud to report that I got an unofficial report back from the individual at Ms. Bonlu's agency indicating that he had, he's, he's blind, legally blind. He has gone to our website, he's gone to all of our forms, and with the exception of some of our forms that need to be modified so that the prints are larger, etc., He's happy to tell me and he'll put it in writing and I think our governor will be happy to know that the Department of Labor's website is 87% accessible to persons with disabilities. So please give the Department of Labor also, a hand. Also, for the great system change, by supporting legislation, such as the first person language sponsored by Senator Sanders, and where you identify the person first and then the disability. We also want to highlight the legislation to Disability Month to show that person with the disability, see, developmental disability are important and they do contribute to the community. At that hearing, we also added discrimination against a person with a disability so that they're protected under the Equal Employment Opportunity Law. But last but most of all is advocacy, teaching, Hear persons with, with developmental disabilities to speak for and themselves. For some, the purchase of that brand new car, the first brand new car. Were it not for the passage of the ADA, many individuals with disabilities would not have access to these opportunities. And for that, we are grateful. The commemoration of the 24th anniversary of the ADA is indeed an occasion for celebration. It is the celebration of a journey for persons with disabilities that many compare to the civil rights movement in the United States. Today we celebrate progress made towards equality for people with disabilities and embrace this opportunity for Virgin Islanders to learn more about the organizations and services available to assist persons with disabilities in this community. The ADA facilitates full participation of individuals with disabilities in all aspects of the community. And the organizations represented here today have different roles with one common thread to enhance the quality of life for all individuals with disabilities. The disabled in the audience, 
and the rest. Have you had times when you felt sorry for yourself? Yes. Yes. Times when you felt that your disability has ruined your life? Yes. Times when you wondered whether you were worth it? Times when you felt no one understood? I have heard your answer to all of these questions. What I also know for sure is that though it might be that way, it doesn't have to stay that way. I'd like to tell you a few of my experiences and what I've learned. Long before I was chosen to appear on television in NBC Universal's 2012 run of the Glee Project, I had more drama in my life than I knew what to do with. I come from a large family of nine siblings, and I'm a triplet. My mom died suddenly when I was five months old, and my dad wasn't interested in doing the father thing. So he abandoned us, giving us to our grandmother who raised us, which actually ended up being a good thing since my father turned to a life of drugs and crime and ended up ending out of jail. My father was to save the vision in my right eye, but I ended up losing the vision in that eye. And a few years later, again at age nine, I lost the rest of the vision in my left eye. Now, I had been used to riding bikes, playing video games, watching my favorite television show at the time, The Simpsons, and other fun things that kids like to do that require having vision. But suddenly, I couldn't do these things. When other guys my age were getting in touch with their macho swagger, I was just trying to walk across the room without tripping over something. And needless to say, Black people in the audience can understand that that's not always easy. 